alaikum. I am Lizama from Tajuddin School. Students, how are you all? I hope you all are at home and doing great. Students, uh, before starting the lesson, please mark yourself present by scanning the QR code or you can follow the link provided. So in the previous lesson, you have learned about sole traders and partnership business, isn't it? So today we are going to learn about companies. Isn't that interesting? It will be interesting within this lesson, okay? Okay, first of all, we will look at the learning intentions of today's. Uh, first of all, we will learn the definition of companies, the formation of companies, and the types of companies. Uh, after that, we will learn the features of private limited companies, the advantages of private limited companies, and finally, we will learn the disadvantages of private limited companies. Before starting the lesson, we will enjoy, let's enjoy a short video related to this topic. A share is a portion of ownership in a company. In order to understand what a share is, we need to understand first what a company is. A company is a legal entity that allows its owners to conduct business under a separate legal identity, limiting their personal liability. We owe the idea of a company as we know it today to a couple of wig-wearing lords in the British House of Lords and a bootmaker named Solomon. In 1896, these gentlemen brought into being the concept of a fictitious invented identity that could be created by individuals and could get into business and succeed or fail independently from its owners. The new idea soon spread across continental Europe and America and became what we know today. So a company is created by individual or individuals who know the secret spell. Okay, they know the legal procedure, whereby some forms are signed and an identity number is provided by specific state offices this number represents an identity that can buy and sell goods, provide services, open bank accounts, and even become bankrupt, all totally separate from the original founders. The original founders usually fund the newly created fictional identity with initial resources such as money, and in exchange, a share of the control over the company and part of the assets in the new fictional identity are issued. Thus, if five founders contributed $100 for the new company in equal parts, each one will get 20% of the total share of the new company. Shares are usually issued in financial terms. Therefore, if the company issued 10 shares of $10 value, each founder will get from the company two shares, $10 each. The company could even issue some nice share certificates. Shares represent an owner's right to the company's profits. If our newly created company earned a million dollars and wanted to return $100,000 to its owners, each owner would get 20% of the total profit, or $20,000 according to his shareholdings. Shares represent also a claim over the company's net worth, what will be left of assets after all liabilities are settled in case of dissolution. If our company made $2 million profit and was to be terminated by its shareholders, it would first pay back all liabilities it had, suppliers, loans to banks, employees, let's say $1 million. The rest, its total net worth, also called equity or capital, of $1 million would be divided between its shareholders according to their shareholdings at that time. Each one would get $200,000. Shares also provide the authority to make decisions concerning the company. So, for the company to decide to nominate a chief executive officer, fancy word for the top manager, a majority of the shareholders would need to approve of the decision before it could be done. In our case, a minimum of three shareholders representing 60% of the shares would have to approve for the proposal to be accepted. Shareholders can trade in the company's shares. They can sell them for cash or buy more of them, adding to their control and gaining a larger relative portion of future profits from the company the shares belong to. students how was the video isn't that interesting so students we will uh, have two friends with us 
that's Ali and Hali. Say hi to them. So they are also trying to make a business. They are also trying to start a company. How can we open a company? Shall we find out about companies? So students, they also want to know more about what is a company and what are the things included in a company. First of all, we will learn the definition of a company, okay? So a company is an organization formed in between individuals or legal entities having a common objectives to carry out a commercial activities, okay? So if it is a company, that means that the, so the members of that company must have a common objective. Now you may wonder, what is this commercial activities involved in a company? So commercial activities means performing services or providing goods can normally be obtained from a private enterprise. However, it can be obtained from a public corporation as well. Now we will look how a company is formed. Well, when you uh, studied about sole trader and partnership, it was very easy to form sole trader and partnership business, isn't it? But in uh, companies, the thing is, the information of companies requires a lot of legal and administrative works. Students, we need two types of documents that have to be completed before uh, starting a company. So let us look at what are the two types of documents. The first one is article of association. It may be a new word for you, but you will learn through this lesson, okay? What is the first document? Yes, article of association. So now let us look what are the things that include in a article of association. Are you ready? Yes. Article of association includes information on the purpose as well as the duties and responsibilities of its members. What does that include in article of association? The purpose of the company, the duties and the responsibilities of its members. For example, our two friends, Ali and Hali. If they uh, start a company, they have to fill this document. What is the document? Article of association, isn't it? So what does include in the article of association? Yes, it includes the purpose of the business, the duties and the responsibilities. Okay. So what is the next document that we have to fill before starting a company? The next document is Memorandum of Association. What is the second document? Memorandum of Association. So now let us look what does include in a Memorandum of Association. The member or the shareholders attributes toward the companies need to be identified. So what do we have to identify? The shareholders or the members attributes toward the company need to be identified in which document, students? Yes, in memorandum of association. So what are the two documents that we have to fill before starting a company? There are two documents, article of association and memorandum of association. So Ali and Halim must fill these two documents before they start a new business. So what's the next question of these two friends? Now that we know what a company is, Halim, what do you think the type of company we should form? What's the response of Halim? Type? I know many types are there. How, how many types are there? Let's find out how many types are there. Yes. 
So now we will look the types of companies. Okay. There are total two types of companies that you have to learn. Okay. How many types are there? Two types of companies that you have to learn. The first one is private limited company and the second one is, what is the second one? Public limited companies. Okay. The short form of private limited company is PVT and the short form of public limited company is what is the short form of private public limited company? Yes, PLC. Okay. So, what's the next question of these two friends? Oh, nice. So, how about we form a private limited company? That's the suggestion of Ali. So, let's look what's the response of Halim. Okay, fair enough, but what is so special about private limited companies? So let's find out what is a private limited company, what are the special things about this private limited companies? Students, are you ready? Okay. Private limited company is often small to medium sized company owned by shareholders. Okay? Owned by shareholders. When you learned about sole trader business and partnership business, sole trader business is one man business, isn't it? And partnership business is 2 to 20 members involved in a business. But here the difference of private limited company is often small to medium sized companies okay often small to medium sized company with whom with shareholders so now you may wonder what is this shareholders who are the shareholders shareholders are the person who owns share in a company so from that video so you have known about what is the share what who are shareholders isn't it so in a private limited companies, there will be whom? Shareholders, yes. Shareholders are whom? Shareholders are the people who own share of a company. And private limited companies cannot sell share to general public. However, they can sell their shares to their friends and families. Okay, what's the another question of them? Let's find out. Great, I want to be a shareholder. So they want to be a shareholder, isn't it? Ha ha ha, me too. So what are the features of private limited companies? Students, do you have any idea about the features? Let's find out. Okay. So now you know the definition of private limited company, isn't it? What is the definition? Do you remember? It is often to small to medium sized company with whom? Yes, with the shareholders. So the features are, do you remember the two documents students? What are the two documents? Article of Association and Memorandum of Association. Isn't it? The two documents are Article of Association and Memorandum of Association. So these two documents must be filled before they start a, before they set it up a business. Okay. So the first feature is the two documents, which is Article of Association and Memorandum of Association, must be filled before they set up a private limited company. Okay. The second feature is the company can raise finance by selling their shares. What is the second point? The companies can sell their shares, isn't it? And this, the, the next point is profit is shared between the shareholders through the payment of dividend. 
the profit is shared between the shareholders. Remember, if Ali and Halim both started a private limited companies, then both will be shareholders. So, they both will invest in a business, isn't it? Ali and Halim will invest in the business and they both will be the shareholders of that private limited company. And if that business get a profit, they will get a reward from that profit. Okay? They will get a reward from that profit. That reward is known as the dividend. That reward is known as the dividend. Okay, students? The business continue if one shareholder die. What happens in sole trader business, students? In sole trader business, if the uh, sole trader is no more, then the business must have to be closed down. But the thing in private limited company is if one shareholder is, is no more, then also the company can continue. Okay? So now they have known about the uh, definition of private limited company, the features of private limited company. So what will be the next, their next question? Cool. What advantages do we have over a partnership? There must be. Let's figure it out. Okay. So now we will look into the uh, advantages of private limited companies. So these are the benefits over a partnership or a sole trader business. Okay, students? So here, the, today we will learn three advantages of limited company. Okay? The first advantage is limited liability. Remember students, when you learned about uh, partnership business and sole trader business, there is one disadvantage that is unlimited liability, isn't it? Do you remember what is meant by unlimited liability? Yes, unlimited liability means that the partners or the sole trader must sell off their personal belongings in order to in order to what, students? Yes, in order to pay off their debts. What happens in, in limited liability is, it means that their shareholder of the company are only liable to the extent of the value of their shares. That means, for example, Ali invest 51% uh, in a business, okay? And if the business incur a loss, then Ali have to bear, Ali is liable for only that 51% of his share. Okay? Limited liability means the shareholders only liable for the amount of money that they invest in a business. So that will be an advantage for the shareholders. Let us look what is the second uh, advantage of private limited company. Separate legal entity. Separate legal entity means uh, completely separate from its owners. That means the company is uh, completely different from its owner. That means the company will have their own bank account, will have, the company will have their uh, own name. So if Ali and Halim started a new business, the profit or the money of that business will be in the bank account of the companies, not in Ali's or Halim bank account. Okay, students? What is meant by separate legal entity? That means company is completely separate from the shareholders or from the members. Okay? So the third one is sale of assets, sorry, sale of shares. It is unlike sole trader and partnership, it is easy to raise capital to sell by selling shares to friends and families. In private limited companies, 
the, they can sell their shares to the friends and families. So therefore, they can raise uh, finance. Okay. That's it. Let's do the business. So now they are ready to do the business. Wait, wait, wait. It should have some cons too. Yeah. Of, in everything, there are advantages and disadvantages, isn't it? So in private limited companies also, there must be some disadvantages. So let's find out the disadvantages. Okay, so here are some of the disadvantages that we will learn today. Restricted access to capital market. So now you may wonder what is this now capital market is? Capital market means where the buyers and the sellers sell, uh, uh, sell off their financial securities, for example, the shares. Okay, for example, the shares. So in private limited companies, we will be talking about the shares. In private limited companies are legally restricted from issuing their shares to public offering. What happened in uh, private limited companies are the shareholders, uh, the shares can be sell off only to their friends and families. They can't sell their shares to general public. So that is restricted from the capital market. So that will be a disadvantage, okay? What is the first disadvantage? Restrict access to capital market. The second disadvantage is access to credit. Okay, for example, what happened in a, a private limited company is if, let's say, if for example, uh, one shareholder dies, if one shareholder got bankrupt, then it would be difficult to get uh, finance for the businesses, okay? The, what is the second one? Access to credit. And the last one, the last disadvantage that we will learn today is control. What is the last disadvantage that we will learn today? Control, okay? What happened in private limited companies? There will be very few shareholders, okay? For example, Ali and Hali, only two shareholders, isn't it? So for example, if Ali is having 51% of shares of that business, then they, the Ali will have more control over the company. Therefore, it may lead to conflict between Ali and Ali. What is the third disadvantage? Control. Only few shareholders, or one shareholder may own 51%, like I said before, Ali may have 51% of shares of the business, which may lead to conflict between Ali and Hali. Okay? So, why don't we recall what we have uh, discussed right now, just now? Okay, I will give you some questions, okay? First question is, what is meant by private limited company? Yes, it is medium to small size company with whom? With the shareholders, yes. The second question is shareholders are own shares of the business. Shareholders will own shares of the business. Okay, then we have two more questions, students. The type of businesses are, what are the types of business? Yes. PVT and PLC. And limited liability means, the last question students, limited liability, this is the advantage of private limited company. The shareholders are only liable for the amount they have invested in the businesses, okay? So that's it for today. Before you leave, please students, make yourself present by scanning your, this QR code or you can follow the link given.